Hi, friends of cocktails! Today we're taking a little journey through the history of a classic American cocktail, the Sherry Cobbler, with the help of Jerry Thomas and David Fondrich. I'll make and try three versions. Two versions from the Bartender's Guide, one from 1862 and one from 1887. And lastly, a modern version with my raspberry syrup. I love going through these books and learning about old cocktails and how they have changed through time. If you're ready, it's cocktail history time. So the main reason I decided to dive into the history of cocktails is to show appreciation for the rich foundation of our craft and to gain inspiration for creating cocktails in the future. That's why I got these books, with more on the way. Jerry the Professor Thomas wrote the first ever cocktail book in 1862, titled How to Mix Drinks or The Bon Vivant's Companion. Revised editions were renamed to The Bartender's Guide, with the 1887 edition being released two years after his death. The Bartender's Guide is considered a cocktail bible, but how does it stand the test of time? Well, that's what I'll try to find out, as I try and show you some cocktails from this legendary guide. To get a better understanding of it, I also got Imbibe, a modern interpretation of sorts, with a bunch of useful tips on how to fully dive into the history of the American cocktail. A lot has happened since 2007, when the book was first published, so I got the updated 2015 version. All these books are excellent reads if you're into the history of cocktails, and I'll certainly try some and see if they could use some tweaking, or even a major twist, to better fit a modern palette. So let's start with a true American staple, the Sherry Cobbler. It's a simple cocktail containing sherry, sugar, some fruits, and a lot of ice. According to David Fondridge, the first reference to the recipe can be traced to 1838, when Catherine Jane Ellis, a British artist, wrote it in her diary, after an eventful trip overseas. But as with many cocktails I'll cover in these episodes, the recipe was first published by Jerry Thomas. Not only did the professor write down the recipe, he also noted that it's necessary to display some taste in ornamenting the glass after the beverage is made and even added an illustration. Jerry Thomas wrote down seven cobbler recipes, including a whiskey cobbler, but it was the sherry cobbler that was said to have become the most popular beverage in the country by the end of the 19th century, with ladies as well as with gentlemen. The cobbler has a lot of classic and modern variations, but they mostly stay true to its iconic look. Crushed ice, a lavish garnish and a straw. That was a big deal back then, with the ice trade just becoming a thing. The sherry cobbler, which probably got its name from, the little cobbles of ice over which it was made, was unpleasantly cold to drink if you have bad teeth, which a lot of people did back then. So how do you make sure your drink is nicely chilled to cool it down in the summer but doesn't hurt your teeth? A long hollow straw of rye was perfect. Sometimes even hollow pasta was used. The more luxurious way was to use metal straws. Whatever it took, people have found a way to enjoy the sherry cobbler. And that's what we are here for. Let's start by making the 1862 version of the sherry cobbler. The recipe calls for two wine glasses of sherry, one tablespoon of sugar and a couple of slices of orange. Thanks to Wondrich, I know that the wine glass back then meant 60 ml or 2 ounces and I was lucky enough to find a wine glass just like that. So I'll start with two wine glasses of a Montilado sherry, which is similar to what was used at the time. Add a tablespoon of superfine sugar and stir to dissolve a bit. Before adding the orange slices, save some for the garnish too. The oranges of that time were not as sweet, so it's not uncommon to add lemon as well, but I'll stick to the original recipe, then add crushed ice and shake. We'll actually serve it in the same glass we're using for the shake. which will add some more ice, then make sure to follow the professor's instructions and ornament the drink accordingly. Orange slices, some raspberries and the obligatory straw. Before we try it, let's make two more versions and compare all three at the end. The second one comes from the 1887 edition of the Bartender's Guide, which doesn't have an illustration of the sherry cobbler anymore, but it adds some extra fruit into the mix, two small pieces of pineapple. So I'll start with a tablespoon of sugar, before cutting the fruit and adding that right into the glass. As for the knife, I talked a bit about it in the Mixology Gear episode. Check that out later, if you're interested. I'd recommend you model both. 
the pineapple and the orange slice to make sure the sugar gets a chance to dissolve a bit. But to follow the recipe, fill the glass nearly full of ice. Then fill it up with cherry wine. Put on the shaker tin and give it a quick shake. No straining this time either. We can serve it in a large bar glass. As per the recipe, add some more ice. Garnish with berries in season. I'm using blueberries this time with a piece of pineapple. And of course, the all important straw. That's two historic sherry cobblers. But the recipe has since become a blueprint for riffs, adding different fruits, juices, spirits or liqueurs, but keeping the overall look of the original. For my version, I'll add raspberries into the drink itself, but instead of muddling them in the sugar, I'll use my raspberry syrup. You can see the recipe in the Clover Club episode. 22 and a half mils or 3 quarters of an ounce will give it some extra summer fruity notes. I'll also squeeze in a wedge of orange and throw that in the shaker as well, before adding the sherry. 90 ml or 3 ounces of sherry. The same as with the previous two cocktails. I'm using the naughty and dry Amontillado sherry. Add ice and shake in a cobbler shaker for about 10 seconds. This probably got its name because of the popularity of the sherry cobblers when it was invented. This time we won't dump the whole contents of the shaker into the glass. I'll garnish it with some raspberries and a sprig of mint, which is often added as a garnish for cobbler cocktails. Make sure to spank it on the side of the glass to extract the oils from the leaves. Sprinkle the mint with some powdered sugar if you're feeling extravagant. Make sure the straw is placed close to the mint. Perfect. Three sherry cobblers. Let's give them all a sip and compare the old versus the new. First, the 1862 recipe from the Bon Vivant's Companion. It's light, refreshing, nutty and fruity at the same time. It became a national favorite for a reason. The 1887 recipe from the Bartender's Guide has the addition of the pineapple and you get that summer favorite taste straight away. It pairs so nicely with the sherry and orange. Great addition to the revised cocktail book from Jerry Thomas. Lastly, my 2022 version. Mint is a great addition to the garnish and the raspberry syrup adds a fruity, sweet tart undertone. In its core, it's still a sherry cobbler, but it has another level to it. Try it and let me know if you like it too. I hope you'll enjoy these old vs new episodes, where we'll take a look at how bartenders used to make some of the classic cocktails for their patrons, followed by a modern take on the same drink. And since all the great cocktail bars and bartenders throughout history had the support of their patrons, we thought it would be appropriate to start our own Patreon page. I can't make you a drink directly. But in a way, this channel is my little YouTube speakeasy bar, where I can share my creations and how to make them with you. If you consider yourself a patron of Cocktail Time and would like to support the future of our little establishment, you now have a way of doing that. Click the link in the pinned comment to become a patron and help us make more Cocktail Time episodes. We appreciate every single one of you watching, so thanks. Nice shirts. Thanks. I'll see you all next week. Cheers. Cheers.